Hey guys, this is DPSI. I'm back with another self-analysis. It's been a while, like actually more than a year um, since I did the last one. I've mostly been doing the um, the league review series just because it's a little bit easier to do, doesn't require as much preparation, but um, I figured I did, I did want to talk about my own games because I've been going through a bit of a losing streak, so I wanted to analyze some of the losses and then I did have a really nice win that I want to cover in the future. Probably next. Um, I think a good way to do it is probably alternate wins and losses. Um, just that way, there's no bias towards winning or losing. And, uh, you guys get to see me do cool stuff when I win, and when I lose, I uh, um, get to learn. So, yeah, I think that's probably a good mix. Um, the, the one that I left off on was actually a win versus Jokos. Um, yeah, it was a win versus Jokos in like 2019, I think. Um, so yeah, two years ago. And um, so yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, that was a win. So this one's going to be a loss, which fortunately it is. Um, so this is actually a pretty important game that I was thinking about going into it. It's uh, the first round of the mixed base open. Um, now this is um, the Discus uh, tournament. And um, it's um, so it's mixed base maps like this one here, and then um, it's Swiss. So luckily, if you lose, you're not out of it immediately. Um, so I was seated decently high, um, but the way that it worked is like it it did the round as if you're going to like immediately. It it, it set up the seed so that like it seeds one through fifty whatever, and then it. As, then it matches up like 1 to 52, 2 to 51, like that. And then assumes that the higher seed wins. And then the next round of Swiss is actually the first round of Swiss. So this is actually, I was, I was like, let's say, I don't know, 12th seed. So I was actually against something like a 20th seed. So this is like somewhat close seeding because I was near the bottom of the top quarter of the, of the seeds. Um, and it's against Uncle Gubs, Gubsy, who goes by Steve in the Discord, and um, I see him play very seldom. So I thought it was actually going to be a cakewalk, and it was not. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, he played a very good game, so let's get into that. So map here, um, so clearly mixed base. Um, so I guess the first thing I was thinking about was CO picks. So really quick, let's go to... Um, it's the tier five, sorry, tier four. Okay, so here's who I had to choose from. Okay, um, I think I think Luxios were banned. Um, no, they were not. Okay, so actually, Jugger and Flak were allowed. Um, so I just didn't even consider those because I wanted to win. Um, basically, like. I really don't think the luck is very good. I mean, this is probably better than average for Flack and Jugger because they um because there's so many infantry on this map. If you take a look, it's actually one, two, three, four base. And um basically like each base produces a fairly large amount of infantry. Um, so probably a better than average map for Flak and Jugger, but still I didn't really consider them. Um, the, like the main contender is Adder that I was thinking about because, um, you know, mixed base with so many bases means that, again, there's going to be a lot of infantry. And if you can sort of play the watch out or I'm going to wipe your infantry game with Adder CO power, um, then you can get yourself into a pretty good position. Um, so there are a fair number of planes around, so Jake is also, uh, you know, a fair choice. But again, like, Adder just seems especially good. Um, Jess, well, lots of infantry, not a ton of, um, let's see what the income is on this map really quick. I think it's something like 20. Um, map analysis... So 24 plus 8 is 32. Yeah, so it's actually 20 per side. So it's, uh, let me just refresh. So yeah, it's 20k per side income. 
And um, on four bases, that's not really all that many vehicles for just to work with. So our infantry kind of suffer, and I think she gets totally wiped by Adder. Um, now Grim and Sonia are the ones that I haven't spoken of yet, and Cole, I guess. So Cole, oh, uh, you know, he has this um, central road here uh, where he could, you know, launch some attacks from. But typically the fighting doesn't necessarily take place right on the road. The fighting often happens, like, right around the airport area. Um, I guess there's some road fighting here, um, but there's a fair number of fronts, like, that has no road. Um, like, the interaction between this base and these two bases on the outside, I guess there's kind of a road. <laughs> maybe, maybe Cole's an option, um, but I just wanted, to like, the straightforward adder game plan, um, not to really worry about it. And Sonya, I didn't really want to consider... You know, like, one tower per side. Um, maybe she's all right, but I just didn't really want to take any risks in the pick. And um, he seemed to think the same way with his adder pick. Now, I'm pretty sure that, like, um, between adder and Jake, they made up, like, I don't know, maybe, like, 80% of the total picks on this map. So it was pretty polarizing towards the what you normally think of as the top two in tier four. Um, but, um, you know, it was kind of, uh, kind of messed up a little bit by the, um, like the mean black and jugger picks. So like, they're actually probably even a higher pick rate if people were trying to play to win. But no, some people played a meme and that's cool and I think it more fun that way. So, <laughs> all right, so let's get into the match then. Um, the first thing to point out is that this double airport um, is double airport, although like you're never going to have the, the income to support double B-copter in a turn necessarily. Like you might be able to do it for one turn, but it's not like you're, you're never going to be in a position where you can like continuously spam out double B-copter unless you've already won the game pretty much. Um, but like really like the, the central point of this map is this contestable airport right here. Um, and then uh, there's like a weird fight that happens over the city. Um, and everything else kind of plays out as you would expect. So let's get into the first turn here. So usual moves. Um, uh, let's see. The first... Um, like deviations, uh, I guess I go for the opponent's city first, which is almost always the right move. Um, oh, sorry, no, no, I forget that I'm not the penguins on this one. So, um, so Gubsy goes here, which makes sense, captures down, which makes sense. So, there's like a really nice capture chain. This infantry can go either here, and if he, if the two base is like kind of lax, this infantry can threaten an immediate three chain, uh, like a no interrupted three chain capture. So that's pretty nice, but um, not going to happen realistically most of the time. What's a lot more likely is you capture here and then you go back and then you have three more cities that are basically guaranteed safe captures. Um, so if you can start this, you know, it could potentially be a capture chain of up to four, although there's like no shame in sending an extra infantry back to help out with those captures. Um, so yeah, pretty reasonable first move there. Um, so I, I actually mirror this capture here. Um, I mean, typically what they do is they, uh, like the map designers will make it such that it's optimal to mirror the opponent's, um, capture of the pre-deployed city. Um, that way there's no, like, first turn advantage from being able to capture a different way. So typically this is the right move, but you should double check for yourself that it is. Um, in this case, I could have gone for the airport first and then like started to work for the city. Um, but I was more interested in capturing down so that I could turn the corner and then go for this city. Um, you know, turn the corner, either go for this city or I guess you could start an early com power capture if things are getting spicy already. Um, but you know, hopefully you can avoid that. Um, 
I guess capturing the tower only delays this city by one turn. So it's not really a big not really a big blow to your capture phase if you have to go for comp tower early. So yeah, I think this is the correct move, capturing down to wrap around for this contested city. And then here, so I, I make the first move on the two base side, um, going capturing upper right. Um, now this actually, well, this came from the, this came from this infantry here. So um, there's like no threat to like go for both this and this at the same time. Um, going straight for the airport is. Kind of weird because you get there in three turns instead of two from this base, so it seems more efficient to take this space infantry to the airport instead. Um, so yeah, I think this move is like pretty natural towards the towards this city. I mean, it's the it's the immediate capturing city too. So like, it's oftentimes hard to argue against that unless you have a bigger chain in mind. Okay, so now Gubsy makes the least committal infantry move, um, going after three different captures. Um, it also has the added benefit of supporting the infantry capture of this city if he wants to. So um, if this infantry... Wait, hold on. Oh, never mind, never mind relevant um but yeah it's the least committal um capture and like the, an extra space in any direction doesn't only takes away your options really doesn't get you to the airport any faster <clears throat> so yeah i mean least committal infantry move that covers the most options makes total sense goes for the airport makes total sense mirrors me that's fine that's all there is to say um go for the airport least committal move um, so this infantry goes straight for the airport. Um, makes sense, you know, I, I really didn't want to fool around and just get the airport immediately. Um, so that was kind of my plan there. Now the airport is interestingly placed one square out of tank range from the base. Um, so that is not a very... And it's also like you know, three turns away for a mech to travel. Um, so, like, the airport is, like, surprisingly hard to grasp and hold on to, as you'll see. So, basically, my move here is move towards the center, move towards the airport. I want this airport with... All my infantry want this airport. Um, that's all the move here. So, then Gubsy does something wild which is double recon cap tower. Um, so like, this is pretty bad from a capture, like like this, you know, the fact that these are not infantry, I mean, this could be infantry tank, really. Um, so it's a pretty hard commit double recon. It, it basically, the, from its alternative, which is infantry tank, it delays uh, the infantry build. So it delays the, capture of, of these cities by not building an infantry here. But um, the recon here was something that I had seen before. Um, I saw some, yeah, I saw somebody else make this play, so I was ready to, you know, go for it. Um, at, least the, at least I thought I was ready for it, so I make the following move which is I bring the tank out and get a bunch of infantry involved. Um, now, okay, other moves first. I capture down to avoid, what? I didn't capture here? Okay, this seems like the correct place to capture because it's the more contested city. I'm not sure what I was doing, you know, allowing this city to be capped. Yeah, I mean, this recon definitely doesn't read. So actually, it would have been better to capture here. So that's one mistake, I believe. Um, and then the other thing here is I think that it's better to 
start the capture on the airport early and just join cap into it um, to avoid the following. So let's let's take a few turns in the future at the at the bottom interaction here. Okay, so no capture tank. So obviously he's gonna respond tank. So there's the tank. Okay, no capture because like tank is in one range of the airport. Like that is not a lot of fun. And like a tank doesn't reinforce in a way that can hit um, a tank that spawns immediately and is trying to hit the airport. So really this airport is like a lot more contestable than it looks. Um, is the long and short of it. So now, let's see, I'm a, so he kind of double attacks me and I actually lose a tank in tempo here, which is, turns out to be pretty huge. Um, and so some turns go by, I mech up, I like push for this airport and death pushes me and goes to the airport cap. So, but really not getting the airport, it like ended up being pretty bad because if I had gotten the airport, I could do what we call in the business, a surprise B-copter. <laughs> so you get the airport, you pop, you pop out a B-copter. And suddenly this thing hits, like, let's see if we can... Okay, look at how many squares this B-copter hits. It hits, like, this front. It hits this base. It hits everything around here. It controls basically the entire northern half of the center. Like, the surprise B-copter really um, grants you a turn of invincibility if, he doesn't, if, if your opponent doesn't have... Or your opponent doesn't have anti-air set up all around you. So, um, so yeah, not going for the the airport capture on this turn turned out to be bad because how difficult it is to take the airport when the tank can reinforce and hit the tank hit the airport immediately. Okay, so, um, and then this move is silly, I should just take the city. Okay, so that's already, like, two minor mistakes, I'd say. And then up here, he kind of snags this port. Um, you know, I was, like, more concerned about him going for this closer city, so it's kind of a, not a big deal. Um... So I go for the compact capture cap because it costs nothing to start for it, and I see that we're going for some early fighting. Okay, so he sort of slowly gets around his airport area. Um, and, the, the, like, the key here is, like, since I'm engaged in a tank war in the south, I don't have funds for a second tank from my upper right base. So, like, I can't really, reta I can't really retaliate doing the same thing going for the airport snipes um, with a tank because I can't afford one of um, So that's like another advantage of being on the attacker's side is that, you know, like you're a step forward. Oh, hold on, how did this happen? Because he has like recon, recon, tank. He has recon, recon, tank. I have one tank. And at the end of my turn, I have another tank? I, know, I guess I do give up some tempo by doing it tank up here. Now he has tank. And now I'm, well, I'm down in exchange. And then I have another 1200 turn, and I have another tank. Yeah, I feel like there was some goofiness that happened. I, I know he base skipped. Um, yeah, he base skipped here in order to pump out another tank. But, I mean, it is pretty squirrely that, like... So, even if it was recon... Even if these two recons were tanks... So, if the two recons would, would be, like... So, just count the two recons as one tank. Because the turn he went... Two recons, he could have gone tank and... Okay, so two recons... So, right now, it's two tanks to one. Okay, now it's two tanks to two. Okay, now he base skipped 
a pretty inconsequential base. Although actually it does allow me to get this city, so I guess it's not completely much inconsequential. Um, but he base skips, which gets him another, uh, he, now he's up one, two, three vehicles to one, two. So it's three to two. All right, take my turn. Now it's, now it's three to three and a mech. And it makes another vehicle. And if I hadn't built the mech, then I could have built two vehicles here. Um, which would have put me, finally, for the first time in this game, up a vehicle. So I actually wonder if the funding curve here is kind of squirrely. Um, I mean, we can, we can check it with the, with the income curve to see. So, so let's see, I'm up 1K, up 1K, up 1K, up 1K. Down 2k, up 1k, down 1k, even, down 1k, even, down 4k, even, down 1k, up 1k, down 1k, up 1k, down 3k. And now it's like the mid game where his vehicles have paid off. So, like, um, I think I was maybe down like 2k overall. In front of the, I mean, we can just look at. Uh, I mean, at this point, um, he's down 3k army value. Sorry, 3. He's down 1. Hold on. 2, 3, 3, 5k. So he's down 5k army value and the. Income is 10, so okay, it's completely even from a funds perspective. And in fact, I trade decently evenly. It's, this power here was pretty crippling. Um, let's see, so what's the point of all this? I guess I wanted to say that the vehicle count was a little bit below. Um, just given, like, how I was down in tanks, I was down, like, one tank to zero, or I, I, I was, like, down or even in vehicle count for the entire mid-game, basically, the entire early mid-game. I mean, look, I'm down. I could have done a tank earlier. No, could not have built a tank earlier. I could have built an early artillery. Okay, so actually artillery here, and then back up the one, two, three, four, five. An artillery backing up this airport cap could have given me more reason to join into it. So that works. Um, so that's something to consider. And it, go and it does put me ahead in the vehicle count just a little bit. Um, but yeah, the way I played it, I was down, down vehicles even. Down, even, down, even with a mech, down with a mech, and then even with two mechs. So now I've finally kind of equalized by this point. So basically, the way to think about it is these two mechs could have been an arty and a base skip, which is kind of messed. so I actually wonder, like this does seem kind of favored for player one. Um, I'd be interesting to, interested to see the stats to see if like the vehicle counts um, went this way for everyone or if, ever, if someone did like a better capture phase or something. Okay, well, anyway, so John's aside, um, we got to this part, and then I made, like, a pretty inexcusable error here, which is just a free shot on my tank. Um, so, what is the damage here? The damage here is, like, 48, so it's pretty guaranteed. 
Uh, if, so a decent chance is I go down to five. So like he got a a roll he probably should have gotten. That's the roll back, which is. So I actually high rolled in response. Um, so it could have been a bit worse if I was down at yeah. If he was at eight, if he was at eight HP and I was at five, it would have been pretty bad. As it stands, I can heal a turn and then we're even. So it kind of sucks, but it's not like luckily luck kind of got me out of that one. Um, but the free hit on my infantry is pretty devastating because I'm supposed to be winning on the in winning with all my infantry here. Um, so yeah, I mean, so alternative placement for the tank. Uh, just put it here, you know, like, there's no, it doesn't really gain anything by being in the forest. Um, I think for me, it was just, like, a miscalculation, like, thinking there was a, assuming there was a forest and here, and it just hits me. So, okay, yeah, um, chalk that up to just a silly mistake. Um, and then this here is something that is, like, I kind of started a bad chain of events on the top here, um, which is the recon infantry get a kill and then um, open up the airport capture. Um, so as it stands, there's no way for me to hit the airport infantry with my tank, even though it would have had, you know, Yeah, I don't see a way that I could have played it a bit differently. I guess I knew what I was getting into with the kill. I just wanted to hit on the recon, but like, really, the recon lives for moments like this, where it can full kill an infantry and then get hit in the process, delaying the city for let's see, one, two, and then he gets it. So yeah, the fact that the recon kills here is like pretty uh, hurts a bit. So, like, I guess the infantry, well, okay, I guess I kill a unit in retaliation um, and only allow one shot on my, onto my infantry. So that's actually, like, not bad. I mean, from a value perspective, I come out way ahead. Um, it's just that, like, at this strange point, it's like there's so many infantry that my tank can't do enough damage in enough time to, like, clear them out. So maybe... So what I did here, I went for this capturing infantry um, with the tank, and then kind of dove with these two full HP infantry to kill one H one HP. So now that's kind of silly because I lose an exchange retreat with everything. Yeah, I guess that kind of breaks my golden rule of like not. Um, not trading evenly in unit count on the one base side. I think that after this, well, I, he, has, he has to move. So after this, I think I just retreat, sit on the city, build anti-air, hit this infantry, maybe finish it off with this 4 HP infantry. Maybe not, maybe just run away. Um, just like camp this city, anti-air infantry down to here. And now it's like my tank is in a forward position, has backup from the anti-air, um, maybe move the infantry down here so it can try to two hit KO from this spot so my anti-air can get in on the airport. But no, the airport, like the follow-up means that he gets a free B-copter off and I didn't build my air. So why didn't I build my anti-air? Like, uh... That should be an anti-air. So what I did instead is I did mech tank from the bottom base, um, which makes sense because I was kind of getting hammered there. Um, I still could have done mech anti-air. So that's another possible build. Um, although that doesn't, probably doesn't even stop. Yeah, it didn't even stop this attack because I don't have enough attackers to get me pat get me through those two. So yeah, I think that um, 
I think that pro I think it probably messed up this exchange here by going for maximizing damage instead of like minimizing damage to myself. Um, I mean, I guess normally you try to think about net damage is the thing I'm trying to go for. And here I did a lot of gross damage, but kind of not a lot of net damage. I mean, I killed the recon, but like I continued the exchange until my infantry supply dropped it, died. And then once your infantry supply dies, here's what happens. Like infantry supply is dead. They're, they're all wounded, can't really body block. Force builds up and then they take your base. So that's pretty bad. Um, with more infantry around, you can hold off that push long. So, I mean, even if he has more infantry, it's just like... Yeah. And, and the other thing, too, is like by losing this early exchange for free, I, I kind of am forced to catch up in the bottom with the mech tank builds, of which I do two of them. And then, and then another mech build to follow up. And um, so this is something that, like the catch up move here, I thought was pretty good, but um, a number of other players didn't like it. Um, so I'll explain why I think it's why I think it's good. Um, I mean, it's situationally good. Like, I don't really recommend mech spam in general. But what we're seeing here is. Um, like one, two, three vehicles against an injured tank and a tank. So I want to like, and the other thing is like there's only one infantry here. So like a mech really kind of counters this composition. So then, okay, one, two, three vehicles and two infantry. Now I want to like dominate on the vehicle count so that I can like crush this composition once my mechs get deployed. Um, so tanks start doing work on the right hand side, and then there's a big attack by Gubzy here. Um, this tank swings around and does a lot of damage to this tank, which I was, you know, didn't really calculate. I didn't really have time to like plan out all of my opponent's moves, so like I was caught by surprise a few times, which is never what you want. Um, Counter move here is to, um, what did I do exactly? Oh yeah, I CO powered so I could move this infantry down to the. I need two hit KO here. Move the tank up. And then um, do a bit of damage that way with the mech backing everything up. This is all right. Um, things are looking all. Things are looking. Like decent from a fighting perspective, um, but like really not having that airport not doesn't it means that like if you look at how many anti airs I have to build to deal with this B copter, I have one anti air, two anti air, three anti air because now he has my airport. Like if those anti air are tank and he has no B copters, like it's a totally different conversation. Um, like I have, a, I have a lot of money that I sunk into anti-air to sort of shut down this one B-copter. Um, so if I can respond with a B-copter of my own, it means I don't need as many anti -air. The idea here. And you can also do funny things like um, front switch swap with your B-copters, like force anti-air from both sides. I guess I can explain. Um... So at this point, though, it's like hard tactics. So uh, this is kind of like a pretty suggestive formation that makes me think I should run in and kamikaze and roll these infantry up, which I do. Um, unfortunately, though, he's like right near meter charge, and this is not a great defensive formation, so he just kind of wipes a lot of it. Um, so... Unfortunately, it doesn't work great. I guess, it, I guess the mech spam kind of pays off at this moment. Um, I do wish that I could see like the turn by turn, like the move and move, but um, it's not happening in this replay. Um, I kind of throw a lot of resources at this 9 HP tank 
on city with power in order to kill it so my player can reach. Or one, two, four, five, six, seven. Well, that's not what I do. Oh, I see. I don't. I don't kill it. So then I have to super CEO power in order to wrap around and hit from above. Whereas you would hopefully just want to use a CEO power in this situation. Because um, like if you look at um, you look at like the attackers and such. Uh, like one thing that could happen, you, you don't want the anti-air to die, that, that much is for sure. You could do tank, well, I mean, I was thinking, like, the way I did it, I, I maximized things so that, so with CO power, this almost certainly kills. Um, This guy gets hurt, and this is on his CO power too, so he's not getting any, getting any charge for this. Um, no, this doesn't work. Um, I mean, this is good enough. You like do that much damage. I mean, that's a big problem, though. <laughs> yeah, so, like, it's salvageable down here, sort of. Like, you can do a lot of damage in retaliation. For instance, you do... I don't know, like, even... Like, without committing super hard... You can do one of these, that looks really great. Um, like, his only strong unit left is his B copter, which is has a um, anti air ready to kill it. Oh, probably you want to do like that. I don't know. Something like this. So your anti air is vaguely safe. Um, but yeah, up here is pretty bad. So let's see what results, what gave us this result. Um, like I said, like the trading around here, so like I think we went minus, so uh, see, he, see, he did minus, I, I, I have minus one unit, now I killed the unit. Killed the number unit, so I'm up one, down one, and now I'm like retreating and uh, we're both down two units, but since he's two base to one base, like he just overwhelms. So uh, I do. I even do things like kill units for free with mech backup, and that doesn't. That like gets me another net unit um, at the top here. But it's you know it's two base pumping into one, and um, I did something interesting with like trying to build a mech from this base. Uh, I mean, interesting in that it looks stupid. Um, but the idea was, like, I wanted to move it up in here and threaten vehicles building these two bases. Basically, like, get them to commit more units to this base um, as opposed to, like, you know, storming this base. So that was my idea. Um, the other thing I could have tried was I was thinking about, like, an artillery. Um, and the artillery may have even worked better than I thought. Like if you, so a, an artillery on a non-CO power turn goes one, two, three, four. So artillery on a, on a non-CO power turn goes here, where the one HP infantry is. And then he responds with artillery. And then you get to move your artillery to here, I suppose. Um, Yeah, I guess it's not great. Because then he can move the artillery here, and then it covers the city. Not the best. Um, so yeah, I guess artillery is not, not a great move. But, you know, coupled with mech, actually, it seems interesting. But the thing is, like, artillery plus mech out of this base, like, and you're really, if you're committing that much into this base, you really, really need some kind of 
you need some dividends from doing that. If you don't get dividends from having 9K units in here, um, you're doing something wrong. Uh, so, yeah, the thing is, like, just spamming infantry out of here doesn't really do much for um, reinforcing other flanks unless uh, you can, like, connect in the middle, which is pretty hard because I don't even have an airport in the middle. So, so, yeah, basically, long story short, this base didn't really do very much. This base was kind of on its own. And then it even got hit from, like, multiple sides. So at this point, I'm like sticking tanks in dangerous, precarious positions, trying to get some control in the center. And look at how far back I was, and yet he still found a way to attack ferociously into this and cover my base. So, I mean, uh, Adder is just like brutal when it comes to stuff. Um, like, I, I can't even think of a position. I guess the mech, if it's back, even yet another space. Um, and with two B-copters, yeah, it's just really tough. Uh, at this point, he just like takes center control rashly and then and attacks hard with CO power. So there's not really much you can do about that. Like, it's just... Uh, like, the, the key thing here is that like all of his wealth is concentrated in tanks in the center, so he can attack either or both sides. Um, so I think the only thing to do really is like retreat even further, mech span even more, like defensively keep these cities under control, um, while like getting a deeper foothold here, because like yeah, again the attack down here is not game losing. But the attack up here is, because it takes up the mech too, which kind of... So maybe even like playing a bit faster on the top and delaying, like building more mechs would build. Maybe there should have been a medium tank, but I don't even have the money for me. Yeah, maybe join mech and medium. Tank infantry up. Yeah, I mean, by this point, I'd made him. I'd made enough mistakes, um, and he hadn't really made too many mistakes to the point where it's like, I like, I don't really deserve to win this anymore. <laughs> so you can think about it this way too. So then, like the the actual follow up is this move, and then I think I play one more move. Yeah, I, I make the move to take out the B copter. Um, but unfortunately, there's just like too many tanks here, and I've lost too much. So he just captures the base. Um, I have some really great shots to take here, um, but unfortunately, it's just like too little, too late, really. Like I'm, I'm actually winning this one. It's just the the wraparound of the tanks from the right hand side do look pretty scary. So it's just. I can't quite catch up on unit count fast enough to overwhelm this space. Not to mention it's just like it's far away. So it'll take some chance to get there with my infantry. So then he makes a follow-up turn. Oh no, that was my follow-up turn. And then um Okay. Whatever replay, whatever. Alright, so yeah, thanks for watching. Um yeah, this one was a little disorganized. Um, basically, I talked about um, the game to like master of math and a few other people who had things to say. Um, but yeah, so so I guess to summarize, um, sort of mistakes. I think the first thing is actually like talking to people about what the deal is with the like with the vehicle build count because you're kind of stuck in the. Uh, nine to 14 K range um, for a long time. And um, that can mean that there's like quite a bit of like imbalance in vehicle numbers, like in uh, vehicle tempo. Um, so I did feel quite a lot of imbalance in vehicle tempo. 
um, despite like the capture phase going decently well as far as um, them goes. So that is something to remark on. Um, now things that for things that sound like I'm not complaining, um, I will say like the, the like the bad tank hit on mine um, was just like a brain dead move where I like lose two tank tempo. Sorry, lose two tank HP, and therefore lose like quite a lot of tempo on my two base front. Um, that's pretty bad. And then um, I think the mech spam was decent. Oh, here again, let me just. Oh yeah, losing a bunch of infantry on the top here is pretty bad. Even though I did go kind of even. It probably would have better it would have been better just to let the tank run free after this point. Just retreat with all the infantry, heal up, let the tank have some fun. Don't endanger my infantry. You know, capture the stuff that needs capturing. And um, you know, yeah, let, let, let the tank do some damage. Or even, you know, send it south, you know. Could have been an option. So a bit of a misplay up here. Um, oh yeah, the mech build ended up not doing much, so don't do the mech build. Instead, there was actually a pretty good option here where I could have... Instead of mech mech 100 left, 1,000 left over, I could have done infantry tank. And a tank here looks pretty good, so... Hard to... Tank here would be great. So that's another... Missed build, build, I'd say. Um, and then by this point, like, he did the right thing in bunching up his forces in the center to, like, have a death bolt to have a massive CO power. Um, so, maybe recognize that I don't really need tanks here, that I, I just need mechs to defend or artillery to defend. Um, so like a hard defend in the upper right, while with some support from the bottom could have been an option. Could have brought this tank over the top um, with some shielding. Although, those look pretty darn hard to do. So, yeah, pretty non-trivial. I did think about this move a bit, and um, this is the best I came up with. Fortunately, it wasn't enough. So, yeah, GG's to Uncle Gubsy. Um, he definitely deserved to win. Um, did a lot of things right and didn't make any mistakes. So, yeah, I'll do round two next, and um, hopefully I'll kick some butt and you guys all about it. So, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.